Hey, what's up? Lee Ron here. And in this video, you're going to learn how to simplify a huge crowd of people and make it look believable in watercolor. But before we do that, I've been asked about Sansa. So yes, I have in fact painted Sansa Stark. And hopefully you can see here without the, the glean, um, her cold look. <laughs> so I hope you uh, like this one, painted it. Uh, a while ago. But in any case, back to the topic at hand, we're gonna jump into this tutorial as a scene based on a picture I took in New York. If you can recognize, that's actually Brooklyn Bridge. So with that being said, let's get started. So I'm working here on a rather small piece of paper. Um, I don't need to show too much of the details. What I want to focus on is uh, from a zoomed out view. Does it look good? Does it look convincing? Does it look like a crowd of people? The composition is very simple actually. It's kind of an L. So we have this building on the left, which I like. I like how it kind of borders the scene. We have a tree here. And then we have the Brooklyn Bridge, obviously, a very famous and beautiful scene right here without too much addition. So this is actually the bridge, you know, the, the part of the gate. I'm gonna bring out more of its details uh, with color in just a moment. This is the road leading towards us. But here is the, the main idea is the entire huge crowd of people right around here up until this area. Uh, we do have uh, a couple of people here. That's kind of where I'm going to place them. It goes a bit at an angle and I know it doesn't look like much right now, but it will. Okay. I'm going to put behind this the uh, a couple of uh, awnings for the food carts like so. Food carts are right here behind and I'm not going to need much more than that. I'm just going to develop it into something that's a little more accurate. So these are the trees. <laughs> this is uh, the bridge and it goes like that. This is the other side of the road actually. There are a bunch of cars here but they're so small and in the distance it's not going to mean too much. Okay, it's just a couple of taxis which is nice, you know, but it's so far there. Uh, and then we have all of these buildings in the background. Let's go like that. Another building here. And with that, we're pretty much done. Now the secret, and I know I didn't put anything here, is to make this entire thing look like a convincing crowd of people, we just need to get one or two that actually look like people. So we're going to have this guy here that's really close to us. And again, our emphasis here is on the big shape, so I'm not going to concern myself with two accurate of a, of a drawing, but I do want to get one or two people in there accurately. So this guy's holding a laptop or something like that right here. Or a suitcase. I don't know what it is exactly. And he's really close to us. So he's definitely going to read as a person. His hand goes back, but I don't want that. So I'm going to bring it forward like so. So that's one person. Hopefully he's going to be convincing. Now we have a bunch of others. So I'm just going to put in a face here and some hint of uh, the body of a person. Another one here. And just by establishing these couple of people, it's gonna look like a whole crowd of them, okay? Trust me. Uh, I know it's weird and uh, who knows, you know, I, I don't know, maybe I'll mess this one up, but basically that's all you need. Now there's dude here, another woman here. Uh, she has a backpack. This backpack looks really nice. So I'm gonna get that in. It's huge actually. Um, so here we go. Something like that. Shadows are casting to the left and they are gonna play a role here. So I want to get them in. Shadows from the cart from behind and another person working it. And this is pretty much it. Okay, this is a huge crowd of people. Let's see what we can do with this. Let's move on to the first layer. And generally speaking, I'm going to keep this fairly simple. So I have a cool well of paint here. I'm going to use that with a bit of a phthalo blue and a bit of cobalt blue. And just get a cool mix going here. And uh, I'm going to use that for the sky. Now, aside from that patch of sky, the rest of the scene is quite warm. So I'm going to add a lot of warmth to it here. Uh, I'm going to cover everything like so I don't care going over stuff. And sometimes you want to go a little over the things over the lines because the paint's going to bleed back. Okay. Now for the buildings for everything else, it's just going to be a warm color. So I have this um, kind of cadmium yellow 
gamboshi color. Um, it's very opaque, so you have to get used to it, but I love the way it looks. I love its warmth, so I love using it. Um, I'm gonna cover almost everything here with this warm color, like so. And uh, even areas that later uh, are gonna be perhaps cooler again. Uh, I don't really care, I'm just gonna cover everything up. The only highlights I will leave are, and I'm even gonna cover these people up, the only highlights I'm gonna leave are on some of the people that are really up close, okay? So I'm just painting around their faces uh, because they're the closest to us, this is gonna be perhaps a white shirt. Now here I'm gonna add some uh, warmth to it, so just to add some interest here. Like this, and for the ground, and then I don't wanna have all of these people in, um, in a completely highlighted white, so I'm just gonna cover the bottoms here, and that way we're gonna have a nice little white highlight around them, okay? So this is pretty much it. Uh, for this stage, not too much to it, but these highlights may help us later on. You know, it's just making some preparations for later, nothing really is set in stone here. And you see how this stage should be easy, you don't have to struggle with this. This is fairly simple. I'm gonna get rid of these gaps, because I don't like them. <laughs> Usually, I, in the past I didn't care much, but now I know that I don't like them as much. I'm just gonna get some pure blue and place it somewhere around here for contrast's sake, where there's so much, um, you know, warmth here in the lower half, that adding some of this may help, okay? Now we're gonna let this dry for a couple of minutes, then come back and you'll see mainly what we wanna do is establish the main shapes. So once this dries, we'll work on the bridge and the, the, the road, then the crowd of people, the halal cart, the, I think it's a halal cart, yeah, and the people here, and all of this, the shadows casting to the left, and I think it's gonna be a beautiful result. So now this is nice and dry, and notice how faded it dried, so when you worry about going too dark or anything like that, you see you see my point. Uh, even if you think you've made a terrible mistake, once it dries, really nothing is left. Uh, so now we're gonna start working, uh, making our way. I love the contrast here behind these uh, awnings, so I wanna preserve that. But then I want to get the dark of the food cart and I want to get its shadows. So I'm just looking at main blocks of shapes. So actually I'm going to start here with the building on the left. It's fairly warm, so I'm going to start with an orange. This is how I do it, okay? And I don't talk about it in every process I do. So uh, keep your ears <laughs> listening now. Uh, I usually start with a very strong orange and then I dumb it down with blue. That's how I do it. I start with the warm this way and then I dumb it down. So if I want a strong, a, a cool color, I may start with a blue and maybe a bit of red and then use the yellow very carefully, okay? Now I have a feeling this is gonna be way too warm, so let's dumb it down a little more and add a bit more yellow. I think this is more like it. So this is the building in the background. I'm gonna try and get the edge in one brush stroke, you see, so that just keeps things simpler. Now the trees are fairly light, so let's get this kind of a thing going where the trees uh, foliage shines through like that. Um, and then I'll go over this because there's not enough water here. Here we go. Now this tree on the right should be dark. So I'm gonna mix a second mixture composition here in which I put more of the uh, green and uh, kind of yellow and blue for this tree. I'm gonna get rid of some of my water on the towel and then I'll do this nice little brush, uh, dry brushy effect, paint around these highlights and I can actually kind of stop around here. And then moving back to the left section, um, I'm just gonna have to manage here really. So I'm gonna take a bit of um, yellow and fill in some of the gaps here because I still want it to flow, you see, uh, like this, work my way around the awnings, but here I have to stop, because this is where I get to some highlights and where some people are, so let's stop here. This will hopefully create the impression of trees. Now let's start working on this section, and here it's gonna be a fairly neutral color, so I'm gonna need a bit more blue and neutralize this. The bridge itself, and let me move my palette a bit, 
Um, and it's very small. So again, when you're working this small, you have to be a little careful. Okay. Uh, I'm going to darken it a bit. So more blue, more red, more yellow, more of everything. Okay. Um, so you have to be careful working these small sizes, but if you were to work larger, you can work a little more freely. These demos, quite honestly, it's just faster to do these um, smaller sizes. And since I do a lot of YouTube videos, I think uh, compared to other channels, I do want to uh, have time for my other work. So I use easier scenes that are still very good lessons. See, so this is for the actual uh, bridge. We have the road here that goes kind of like that towards us with a few highlights on it. And then we have the buildings in the background. For the buildings in the background, and I know it doesn't look like much yet. Trust me, it's going to look like more. I'm going to use a bit of a bluer and lighter mix because you see the background is fairly lighter and bluer. So we go like this. This is the building in the background. I actually have a bunch of them here. This goes kind of all the way up to the crowd of people. So kind of like this. This building here in the far background as well. Again, you do your best. You paint it as you see it, which is another topic I'm going to talk about soon. But that's all you can really do. Um, so here are a bunch of cars. I'm going to start dropping hints for cars. Um, but yeah, all you, all you can do is really paint it as you see it and hope that it works out well. Uh, now, we're going to move on to, I think, this cart. Because it looks uh, a little easier than the crowd of people. So I, sometimes I'll just tackle things in the order I wish to. Um, the cart itself is dark. So let's get a bit of a dark value going here. Now, this is all a function of how much time are you willing to spend on small details. If you want to get it to be more accurate, you just have to spend more time on the really small and accurate details. With watercolor, the, the process itself has to be structured well. Uh, otherwise, the technique won't support what you're trying to do. Okay, I'm, I'm going to talk about that in a future video, actually. So I won't expand too much. but. Watercolor is funny in that way that, you, you know, with other mediums, you can lift back and you can do all sorts of nice things and, and add uh, light onto dark. But with watercolor, you have to go with the, you know, um, light to dark approach. And, and once you're done, you're done, basically. Um, so you need to have a strong technique structure to support it. Okay, so for example, now, I could go back with some um, opaque paint if I wanted and add all the small details and highlights had I used opaque paint, but I don't. Okay, so that's my point here, really. Um, it's just another hurdle that you have to deal with when uh, working with uh, paint like this. Um, you can isolate small areas and work on them, and then you make sure that you're a little more accurate. There are plenty of tricks to um, get through these stages a little more accurately. Um, it's not going to be necessary really here. I think I'm happy with our level of accuracy. So I'm just going to place a person here. And then there is a car at the back. So let's put that in. It doesn't even matter if it reads as a car. I just need some backdrop, some dark backdrop. That's a person, really. Believe it or not. And I'm painting around these people, which is why you see these uh, lighter areas. Uh, so here we go. That's the shadow cast by the cart and by some other details around it, perhaps. And we're done with this area. I'm just going to add some detail for the awnings. So there is this blue and I like it. So I'm going to preserve that with a very light blue because it's a very light color. I'm going to add it in like so. That's blue number one. And there's another one here. And then there's blue number two somewhere around here. I'm going to darken the bottom of the awnings in just a moment. Okay, trust me, it's going to look a little better. Uh, but hopefully you start to develop a sense of place. Now we'll, we'll start working on this crowd of people. Now my trick here for you is start working on the person closest so that you get a good indication of something that looks a little real, then move on to the rest. Now here is everything is pretty dark. So I'm going to start with a very dark value, but still I want to keep it a bit warm. Okay, so for the face, this is what I'm going to do. It's a, an interesting mix of all of my primary colors with the highlight taken into consideration on the right. Okay, kind of taken into consideration. Then I'm going to switch to a pure blue. 
because look at his uh, clothes, are, they are blue. And I'm gonna leave a couple of small highlights here on the shoulders and on the collar. And hopefully, again, you all you can do really is, is do your best. And if it works out uh, into something that's believable, a believable impression, that's great. And if not, you just have another painting afterwards and it's gonna work. So we're gonna work on it like this. I'm gonna clean my brush, get some pure blue. I wanna make sure that it does look here and then there's the shadow here on the sleeve and these zigzag shadows will help us better indicate that it's clothes on the person a bit of a darker blue here um, for the hand I will add a bit of warmth just a bit of warmth and it's all in the shadow so it's all gonna mix together which I love this is what's great about these very clear scenes with clear light and shadow conditions it's, it's just easier there's no way other way to say it um, here we go, this is for the hand. I could make it a little more red here, sent forward. Um, he has this thing around his uh, sleeve actually, so like this. Uh, I don't know exactly what it is. Um, hopefully that makes sense, I don't know. Just doing my best here. And uh, I'm gonna use just some water and a very diluted paint for the a laptop or whatever it is. So everything is dark. I'm just gonna put in a mid value and this will hopefully fall into place. You see? Something like this. Now we're gonna move on to the people behind. So let's continue. This, there's supposed to be a woman here. So I'm gonna place this in like that. Then her clothes are fairly light, but I'm gonna make them a little darker because I want to contrast it with uh, his sleeve here. Okay, I wanna bring out this figure using this figure. So here we go, like this. And what's gonna turn this into a figure is just the legs. Okay, so I just have to make sure I get those in here. And it's all just one silhouette, okay? And maybe she's holding a bag or he's holding a bag, really, it doesn't matter here. Uh, like this, around the sleeve, shadow to the left. And then you wanna add a couple of shadows behind here. Okay, that's really important because she's not the only person here. Now I'm gonna darken the face just a little bit. It does appear to be slightly darker. So here we go. Then we have another person here. This person can look a little more generic. I just need to make sure I keep the highlights on the people at the front. That's the, the my main concern. So that's another person. Let's cool it off with this person here. And this is really how you can build very simply. And again, this is a small sized paper, so I can't go too wild here, but this is how you build a crowd of people. You see, we already have uh, a bunch of them here. And for the back, all I have to do really is just place in some um, different colors, disperse them and leave some random highlights here and there. And then it's believable. You can see it's a crowd of people because um, I'm gonna get rid of this highlight a bit. Um, you can tell it's a crowd of people just because you have one or two people at the front that tell you what you're looking at. But you do wanna uh, vary the value a bit, have it a little lighter. And I told you I'm trying to work more realistically too. This is not an example of that, obviously. This is a, a highly, um, highly simplified, very impressionistic approach for, for a crowd of people. Uh, with the other approach, I'd actually go and, and try and paint some of these a little more accurately okay obviously it's a bit of a different approach uh, so here we go a couple of people here making the connection between these two areas um, here i do want to patch up this shape because i don't think it really works well as a road i'm going to add some very small shadows under the cars here just to make them a little stronger a bit of a shadow here and hopefully that works a little better as a road now for the people here uh, on the left I'm gonna darken. Uh, the thing with painting against the light is really, it, it significantly darkens everything. What you wanna make sure to do is steer clear of, of exaggerating it or going too overboard with the, with the darkness. Um, because it's really easy to overdo and it's a, a mistake I used to do all the time. Uh, when I painted uh, outside especially, I would make this mistake all the time of going way too dark. Um, and I would be like, but I see it as, as dark as I painted it, so what's the problem, you know? And then it just doesn't work out. Um, so yeah, there is a, a bit of a detail here 
next to his sleeve that I want to get in. And then we're off to the cast shadows. Like so. There's a person behind. I'm going to put them in here as well. Have a shadow for them. And then this person, rather in the shadow as well. But I do want to preserve the details on that. And you know what? Actually, let's make this figure pop a little more. Because I don't have a lot of uh, strong interest when it comes to the colors. So let's get some very strong paint. Red. Um, and make it just a little, to add a little interest. Then the shadow under her backpack. And this you have to just look at the shapes, render them carefully. This goes, follows the shape of the backpack. There are a couple of shapes on the fully back side of it. And hopefully that reads as what it is. I'm gonna yellow the pants a little. Neutral yellow, like so. And the cast shadow. And this is pretty much it. This is how you would simplify this kind of a scene. Now, I do want to add a couple of touches. Okay, obviously I'm not done yet. So for these um, awnings, this is in the shadow, you know, the lower part of these. Hmm. There is, the light comes from the right, so there is a bit of a shadow where the cloth kind of falls and creases. Hopefully that makes sense. Um, there are a bit more people there at the back alongside some green. So let's add those in with a very neutral kind of green here. A bit more, a bit less neutral, I mean. Let's go like this. There's maybe some other foliage, who knows. But hopefully this gives you some sense of place. I'm gonna add a couple of darker areas that'll bring out the backpack and some other details. Maybe let's add a, you know, one of these, I <laughs> messed it up. One of these laces or whatever. Um, some more shadows cast by the crowd of people. And again, if you take a few steps back from it, does it look like people? Does it look convincing to some degree? If the answer is yes to that, then we did our job well. Okay. Now, obviously, a very simplified and very uh, impressionistic scene. Uh, so, I'm, I can just go ahead and put a bit of red on his face because I want to contrast it with the blue here. I don't know why. Now, a couple of dark spots, or extremely dark spots, just to tie this together. We have a bit of a dark spot around this tree here at the back. As much as it is in the back and it's a tree, it's quite dark actually. So I'm gonna place that in, like this. This section under the uh, cart's sign is fairly dark too. So let's darken that as well. These can be very misleading, but uh, sometimes some shapes are, it's very misleading both ways. Sometimes you think it's lighter, sometimes sometimes you think it's darker. Uh, you never really know. I'm just adding a couple of these, you know, uh, lines. Now, there are a couple of signs or, you know, street lights that I want to add just to break the emptiness of this area. And they're actually there, which is perfect. So I didn't even have to make them up. So here we go. But there's one here right amidst all the people and the buildings. So let's do it. Just one continuous stroke. And hopefully it's straight enough. And it's a very interesting look for a street lamp. I'm gonna try and get it uh, to look similar to what I see here. So kind of like this. And then there's another one right to the left. So let's do it behind this. Have it like that. Same concept like this and this hopefully makes a little more sense ties it all together this part of the bridge is fairly dark so let's get that in as well it's like a sign on the bridge you know so that's that there are a couple of you know farther street lights here not really important to indicate but you could and i think with that we're done this is a again a highly highly um simplified scene but hopefully that gives you an idea of how to um, turn this jumble of stuff into a crowd of people. If you want it to be more realistic, you'll just have to improve upon what I did here and just take your time with every individual shape. Okay, it's not rocket science. It is possible for most people, I think, if not all people, to learn how to uh, paint more realistically. Uh, it's just a matter of working slowly, more patiently, more patiently than I have here, I'll admit. Um, and just 
making sure you get all the small details in. So just by adding these, by the way, uh, lines here in the foreground, I, I just make it look a little more like a sense of place and you know we're, we're actually walking here or whatever and real quick before we leave I'll remove the tape and you'll see how a beautiful hopefully scene emerges from that I know a lot of people want to see that stage so here we go I hope you enjoyed this one now we can truly wrap up this vid so this is it for uh, this one I hope you enjoyed it and you know this is a very low res attempt what you can do is take a small piece of paper do a very low resolution attempt then take a larger piece of paper, try and develop everything, try and have more details in every different section of the painting. So more details on the building, more details on the trees, more details on the people, more details on the road, more details everywhere. Okay, work in different levels of or different resolutions. You will benefit from both lower resolutions and higher resolutions. I feel like after a couple of these, I have to do a higher resolution. I, I yearn for it. And after I do a couple of very detailed works, I really want to let go and do this kind of a thing, okay? I hope you enjoyed this one. Don't forget to let me know in a comment down below if you have any questions, if you need help with anything. And I'll also put down their links to my uh, How to Sketch People book. The paperback is going to be out really, really soon. But if you want the Kindle, it's out. Also to my frustration-free watercolor course. If you want to learn how to paint like this, let go, enjoy the process. And to my beginner's drawing course, if you're struggling with the drawing part. So everything is going to be down below. I want to thank you so much once again for watching. I really appreciate it. And I will see you in the next one.